Hello. So here we are in my flat in France and we're going to do another geeky video about equipment. And I'm responding actually to some of the suggestions that were made to me that I should talk about the clothes that I wear. And this is a bit ironic because a number of years ago I used to write a column in a yachting magazine and I suggested that I should write about clothes and when they discovered that I hardly wear any clothes bought from proper um, companies that manufacture clothes for yachting they said well maybe you better not do it because they thought I might offend their advertisers it's not really that I've got much against um, yachting manufacturers, you know, like Musto and so on. They make excellent products. They just don't really make products designed for the way that I sail. So we're sort of going to start from the bottom and work up with the, um, though I haven't actually, I, I'm actually wearing trousers, but I would, my underwear tends to be merino wool. So these are my um, underpants and uh, they, and I'm, as you can see, I'm also wearing this t-shirt. These are actually both Rohan merino wool. On top of that, I have some walking trousers. These are, and they're again actually Rohan, but the point is they're polycotton walking trousers. That's what I tend to wear most of the time. I don't go for particularly extreme ones. They don't have any side pockets on them, cargo pockets, because I find they tend to get caught, you know, if you're on a boat. But the main thing is that they have zips zip in the side pocket so you can you don't lose your change in the bottom boards and there's a zip in the rear pocket so I don't tend to sail with my wallet in the pocket but obviously if you're going ashore to the pub or something you do want to take your wallet with you and you want it in a pocket with a zip so it doesn't sort of flip overboard and get lost. Good thing about polycotton is that it dries quickly, so I don't worry about these getting a bit wet. I just let them dry. I even wade into the water with them. Um, you know, sometimes I roll them up, but sometimes I just don't bother. So I wear a lot of merino wool. And the wonderful thing about it is, compared to synthetic cloth, is that it's naturally warm. It's actually got sort of hollow fibres. You know, sheep are quite clever creatures, um, which has had to be mimicked by synthetics. But the other thing it, is it breathes, and it also transmits water moisture away from your body really well. It absorbs it and then allows it to, to move outwards through the, you know, if you've got a number of layers of merino wool on, through those layers and, and out into the atmosphere. And if you're wearing a, a waterproof top on top so that the moisture is trapped in, because it absorbs it, it actually makes you feel much more comfortable. Wearing wool underneath non-breathable waterproofs is much, much more comfortable. And you'll say, oh, well, I always wear breathable waterproofs. Well, that's all fine, but breathable waterproofs really only work in dry, in a dry atmosphere. And if you're down at sea level in winter, somewhere like this, the atmosphere is super saturated. The atmosphere of the air outside is super saturated with moisture. And so actually breathable waterproofs don't work really well. You will get a lot of condensation inside them. So I think you're better just to take it on the chin and wear waterproofs that aren't breathable, but then wear wool underneath because the wool will absorb the moisture. And then obviously at the end of the day, you can dry them out and wool actually dries very quickly. 
The other thing that's extraordinary about wool, it, when it's damp, it actually gives off heat. It keeps you warmer. Now you're going to say, no, that can't be true. That breaks the laws of physics. Look it up, look it up. No, it does work. It's actually a physical um, effect. It's not chemical. And yes, um, if you wear wool and it gets damp, it does actually give off heat. So you get that benefit from, from woolen garments in, in a cold, damp atmosphere. Really good to wear wool. If you read about how you should dress to go outdoors, everyone will talk about layering. I'm a bit sceptical about some of that, um, but one does tend to put on lots of different layers, it is true. And I use a lot of these. I've had these garments for many years. I bought a whole sort of series of them and I'm an utter fan of them. I should just put this on. So you, I suppose, call this mid-layer. It's again merino wool. It's merino wool fleece. And as you can see, I can put it straight on top of the uh, of the t-shirt. So this is, as I say, wool fleece. It's merino wool mixed with uh, a bit of synthetic which gives it some stability. And these are from a Swedish company which used to be called Il Frotte, if that's how you pronounce it. But they now call themselves wool power. The Swedes don't really like sort of synthetic garments, I believe. They they think people get cold and die if they if they wear synthetics and that the, the proper thing to wear is wool. And I'm rather in agreement with them. And you actually can look at in the garment. So here I've got another one, a rather thicker one. And this says it's made by Elsie Jonsson, if that's, uh, if that's how you pronounce that. So they're that proud of their garments. They're a bit pricey, perhaps, compared to, um, yeah, compared to your standard sailing gear, but not really. And they last. These, some of these I've had over 20 years, and I always take just a set of these so I can layer them. I shall put another layer on top of this so you can see how it works. They have, as you can see, um, thumb holes. There we are, in the sleeves, which means that when you put the next layer on top, like this, you don't lose your sleeves, look. Pulls your arm through, which is all very clever. Yep, so they're designed to layer, as you can see, you can keep putting one garment on top of another. And what they also have is this very long back. Look, so if you bend down, you won't get the small of your back cold. So this top layer is 600 grams per meter. So it's their thickest. This is 400, so it's their sort of medium weight, which I'm going to take off because it's a bit hot. And they also do a thinner 200 gram base layer. I often wear these actually as pajamas in bed. So I wear the top and also uh, the long johns. You probably have seen me wearing these. It means that if you have to get up in the middle of the night you are wearing something. It's a good idea always to be wearing some clothes on a boat because sometimes there is an emergency and you're you know in the middle of a harbour laying out walks or something so yeah best to sort of look decent even in the middle of the night.
I think. On top of whatever clothes I'm wearing, I tend to put on a smock. So this is a canvas smock and these were traditional wear for fishermen and such until probably the middle of the last century and indeed there's still if you go to Cornwall where these are made you still see fishermen wearing these this is actually these are made by a company called the smock shop the smock shop in Cornwall and they this is actually a, a proper fishing version so it doesn't have pockets down here and you can get it with plastic sleeves down here to protect you again when you're working with fish so I tend to have this on on top of whatever else I'm wearing as protection it isn't waterproof but it is a sort of a little bit showerproof and I do sometimes if it's um, you know damp time of year I do actually wash it in a Nick Wax waterproof to make it bead a bit better and keep me a bit drier but basically if it's going to get really wet I will take this off chuck it away in the boat and put on a, a proper waterproof I will chuck that away I have actually uh, rather smarter version which is is a bit newer than that which is in slightly thicker canvas and this does actually have the pockets so it's also from the smock shop pockets are quite nice even if they're not traditional but the trouble is with them that you can catch your thumbs on them when you're rowing you can catch them on the boat and you also can't stop yourself putting things in them and then when you take the smock off whatever you put in them falls out so they're a bit perilous are the pockets but they're really great garments these very useful this is as I say the Cornish type of smock so it's got a round neck and you can wear them on their own in hot weather or as a top layer when you've got lots of other clothes on. They protect you from the wind. Excellent. Excellent garments. Smocks. So somewhere I have my... There we are. The other thing you'll often see me wearing in the videos is this which you probably think is a body warmer. Um, so this is often on top of the smock, or sometimes actually the smock is on top of this. It, it can work either way. It is a body warmer in that it does keep my body warm, but what it actually is, is a Baltic buoyancy aid. So it is made by the company Baltic, who are a big manufacturer of buoyancy aids. And being a buoyancy aid, it does actually have a torch strap, which I shall do up, which holds it down. If you go in the sea, it won't float up. This is what happens, actually, if you, if you don't have something to hold any sort of buoyancy garment down. What will actually happen, I shall show you. It would do that. You will think you could hold it down. No, you can't. Not when you're swimming, and it really will do. You'll end up like that. And that's true, too, if you have one of these self-inflating life jackets, which are very popular. Very, very commonly, they don't have a crotch strap, or people don't use the crotch strap. And if you don't use the crotch strap, you are kidding yourself that you're safe. Um, there is no placebo effect to uh, buoyancy aids. If you're wearing a buoyancy aid, put it on properly or don't bother to wear it at all. And if it's self-inflating, you should have checked that the cartridge is in date, that it is going to work if you fall in the sea. And you should also think about, can you swim in it? Can you climb back into your boat? If you can't swim in it and you can't climb back into the boat and self-rescue, then you're going to have to rely on someone else in your boat rescuing you. And the thing you have to bear in mind is that it's not, people don't tend to drown in the sea, they, uh, well in cold waters like around Britain, 
it's actually the cold that gets you and the cold will get you within an hour most people that's the statistic that's how long you've got so unless you're confident that you can call a helicopter or something and be plucked found and plucked out of the seat you better be able to self-rescue yourself so i'm getting a bit i'm lecturing you a bit probably but this is really important People say, oh, I should wear a Balenciaga. Sometimes I get criticised in really hot weather. I'm not wearing this because it, it can get too hot. Um, and if I'm rowing or something, I sort of say, well, I'm not going to fall in the water. And if I do, I can swim back to the boat anyway. Because, you know, the water's warm, it's summer. I do take this seriously. And a lot of people, I'm afraid, don't. They sort of think just throwing on some sort of self-inflating life jacket has solved the problem and they haven't thought through what actually happens if they fall into the sea and how they actually get themselves rescued. Okay, so that's the buoyancy jacket, which obviously is, uh, is another layer to keep me warm. So I was talking about um, waterproofs. A lot of you know yachtsmen, modern yachtsmen, you they they have their waterproofs on virtually all the time, in um, and indeed even in in dinghies because of the spray. My boat sails actually quite dry, and my you know these sorts of garments can put up with the small amount of spray that that comes aboard. You know, my body heat just keeps the, the garments dry. So I want waterproofs that pack quite small. And so for many years I have used Geeko 10, which is actually a Breton company. And these are their standard, their standard commercial fisherman waterproofs. So they're very, very tough. They are extremely waterproof. They don't make any pretense at all be breathable. I should just put these on. Need to open the side. Uh, is open. There we are. So as you can see it does up the side. And it's got this sort of high bib front. Comes up quite high, but you can actually reach your pockets. I can get into my trouser pockets in the side. It has just very big wide bits at the bottom which can go over the top of your boots. See, I'm not wearing any shoes yet. I'm going to come to talking about shoes. But yeah, that goes outside your boots so the water you know, doesn't sort of drain into your feet. And <clears throat> obviously I have a jacket as well. So quite big because I wear obviously all my clothes underneath and normally I'm wearing more clothes than this and generally I have my buoyancy aid underneath as well. So I can do because it's not self-inflating. So I don't need to take the buoyancy aid off. If I put this on, I just put this on on top. Makes it all rather quicker. They're quite, you know, people criticise these because they're very simple and uh, they don't have all these layers and they certainly aren't made of Gore-Tex. But they are very well specified. They've got um, storm cuffs, everything. Water doesn't really sort of get up the sleeves. And they actually have very good hoods, which as you can see are retro-reflective. All sorts of press studs you can do up round here to pull it up round your neck. But the hood does turn with your head they kinch in very well with lots of, of adjusters so they really work very well I however tend 
to wear a hat. And if it's raining really hard, I'll actually have wear a sou'wester. There we go. Sou'westers are really rather clever because you can turn up the the front of them and they track the water away. This I had to order specially from Nova Scotia. The Canadians are, are big at traditional technology and still make old-fashioned things really well. However, even they've stopped making this. But I'm sure somewhere in the world somebody must still be making proper sou'westers. A lot of the time, as you've seen, I wear a more conventional hat. So this is with a nice big brim, but not a sou'wester. This can work in quite hot weather and in the rain. It's got a wired brim, so it can withstand the wind. It doesn't all sort of flap about. And it has a, a chin strap, so it doesn't blow off. If you wear hats, and obviously they've died out, everyone suddenly decided that no one should wear hats and people don't wear hats anymore. But if you do wear hats, you can't understand why people stopped wearing them. Because they just keep your head dry. And yet you're, you know, you're not all sort of enclosed like you are by a hood. So you tend to, you know, you'll, be, you'll have your hat on even when it's just drizzling, when you wouldn't probably put a hood up. And what you realise if you wear a hat is it's the feeling of having your hair wet that makes you feel wet when it rains. Simply putting a hat on makes all the difference. Other thing about a hat is the brim shades your eyes. And so you hardly ever need to wear sunglasses. Now I don't very often wear sunglasses. And when I do it's mostly because of the reflection off the sea rather than the light from the sky because the, the brim does stop. Yeah, light from the sky. So this I wear almost all the time. But I do have a lighter hat. Which is this one. This is from Tilly. And it's really nice, really hot weather hat. You can see it squashes down flat so you can just shove it somewhere in the boat. And um, I put it on the right way around. Again, it has a very nice deep brim, and being hemp, it's actually really nice and cool. So this is a warm weather hat, and so I wouldn't be wearing it with um, waterproof, so I'll take these off. So the other thing I feel you should watch when you're sailing is you need to protect your skin against the sun. And so I generally, this, this is, I have to say, I probably didn't mention this, this is a summer weight t-shirt. And so I, a lot of the time, wear a long sleeve shirt, which will be on top of the t-shirt or, you know, just on its own. Again, it's a simple polycotton shirt. This is again Rohan, and uh, so it's got press studs rather than buttons. And um, again, the nice thing is it's got zips on the pockets, so if you shove something in the pockets, you know that it's not gonna get lost. Uh, you can obviously, um, snap the, the cuffs and uh, you know roll the sleeves up if you actually do want to. Interesting how you um, you know you can be doing something all your life and you still discover something new is the wonders of the linen shirt. So this is a linen shirt for really hot weather. Linen is just great it just it's very hard wearing and it really does keep you cool. This is just from Marks and Spencer's major retailer in in Britain and that's what it is a Marks and Spencer's 
linen shirt. So I tend to take the polycotton shirt and this if it's summer. And this is for, you know, for really hot days when I want to be cool, as cool as possible and protected from the sun. I should say, obviously, a lighter colour would keep you cooler, but on a boat, on the sort of sailing I do, um, anything light coloured gets stained, so I tend to go for darkish colours just to disguise the stains. Really cold weather, I, I do wear a beanie sometimes. This can go underneath the hood of the waterproof, so this is very much a sort of winter thing if you think you're going to be wearing the, you know, the hood of the waterproof up all the time. And in a similar vein, when it's really cold, having something around your neck makes a huge amount of difference. Having that round there, it's extraordinary how much warmer you feel. Gloves. I don't actually often wear gloves, but when I do, I have a pair of these seal skin gloves. These are completely waterproof. They are Gore-Tex. They are all synthetic, but they're very good. You can still grip things. We'll look at footwear now. Since what I wear a lot of the time are sandals and I just buy cheap ones from a supermarket. So this is now my normal footwear through most of summer. But when it gets cooler, it's sea boots. These are standard Aigle sea boots with obviously the, the non-slip sole. And I put waterproof socks on seal skin waterproof socks so as you can see the um, you can wade in quite deep with sea boots which is great but then the waterproof socks come up even higher so I can actually go in over my sea boots and still have dry feet because these socks are completely waterproof. So that's um, what I wear in cool weather. I can even put two pairs of waterproof socks on which I do by taking the insole out of the, the sea boots. Sea boots often have an insole in and that's something you can use to make them a bit bigger in winter if you want to put on an extra pair of socks. Now, I have just recently, because I'm annoyed with the sandals not lasting, experimented with, with these which are dinghy boots, neoprene dinghy boots. These are standard for dinghy sailors and uh, they, they're sort of reinforced on the top so you can hike a dinghy out. Quite tight fitting. and they zip up on the inside and there's a little strap that that goes over the top of the zip. They're quite good, I have to say. They're sort of a halfway between sea boots and, um, and sandals. But the only trouble with them is that if you wade with them, your feet get wet. You know, they're, they're not waterproof and then all day you've got wet feet. That is the one problem. So you, you, know, you do need to be active or your feet can get very cold. Whereas the advantage of the sea boots is, of course, they keep your feet warm. So the jewelry's still out on these, but I have been, I have been using them um, sometimes, usually 
when I'm um, sailing in rough weather but yet in summer and so I don't want the warmth of the sea boots but I want a bit more protection to my feet than I get from the from the sandals. I don't know what make these are, I bought them they were on offer in the boat show. Typhoon, there we are. So my main project for this winter is going to be a new camping tent for the boat. So I've ordered a whole roll here of Ventile to make a new tent from. The previous one was canvas. And Ventile is a very, very tightly woven cotton fabric now made in Switzerland but originally from Chorley in Lancashire and uh, designed originally for immersion suits during the Second World War so I believe. So that is the plan. This has been quite expensive and I have had a lot of um, thought about which way to go, whether to go for a synthetic fabric or to stick with cotton and I've decided I like the, the breathability of, of cotton and I would um, I would take the, the plunge and go for the ventile so it's going to be interesting to see how that happens and there will be some videos later on this winter as I um, as I make this cover mm -hmm. 